Okay, hi. This is my first live video on Facebook, so trying to figure out how to use this. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. Welcome to Girl Power Hour, brought to you by my messy muse. So my name is Jenny Chen, and I'm an artist, picture book author, and illustrator. So today I'm going to um, share with you my process of making my debut picture book, MX Box. Here's the cover that I printed out from my computer. I don't have a physical book yet, so I just printed it out to show you. And um, it's going to be released in April 2022 by the Little Press. So my book, MX Box, is about a boy who loves to paint, but everyone is telling him to do something else. As MS stops doing what he loves, color disappears from his world. And Emma will have to learn to listen to his own heart instead of all the outside voices to bring color back into his life. So when I was a little kid, I loved to draw and make up stories uh, to entertain myself and my friends. But I stopped drawing after high school when I decided to focus on getting a secure job and becoming a independent adult. It wasn't until my son was born that I started to draw again. So in 2011, when my son was almost one year old, I started this sketchbook. And it's also a diary. I think it's my son's scribbles. <laughs> and I started sketching my son in the sketchbook. I will show you here. And my family. And I also started drawing comics about all the funny things that he will said, say or did. Halloween. <laughs> Ooh, okay. More. So my son will also draw and paint with me. I want to share with you these baby pictures. <laughs> That's him drawing, still drooling. And that's him painting when he can barely sit up straight. <laughs> so uh, he actually became the inspiration for my picture book. I want to share with you my first draft in this diary and sketchbook. So in 2016, I decided to get a fine art certificate from Emily Carr University of Art and Design in my area, it's Vancouver, where I live. So when I was taking classes, I would do my painting assignment in the dining room. And sometimes I'll leave the painting on the table to dry. So one day when I came home, my son had painted all over my painting and he glue like flowers and stuff onto my painting. And then he told me, he announced to me like really seriously, like, mom, you need more colors. <laughs> so that's like uh, the inspiration. So this is the first draft I want to share with you. Here, he was saying, mom, you need more colors. Yes. <laughs> and then I was drawing him painting like the picture that I just showed you. Yeah, so this is my first draft. And it was told from the perspective of an adult. That's me. Um, and one day I was like doing copying like a Pakistani wall art from like somewhere. This is what I did over here. So uh, this is a copy. And he my son saw this. And he drew this all by himself. 
So I just found this. And I thought it was so awesome. So I used this um, page in one of my uh, picture book, in my picture book as one of the paintings of Emmett's, as like one of Emmett's drawing. Yeah, so this is the first draft that I did in 2016. And yeah, then my son was the inspiration. And so I was, like I mentioned before, it was told from the point of view of me, the adult. So it was good that I decided to take a picture book illustration class because from that class, I learned a lot of things like thumbnailing, making a dummy book and uh, telling the story from the point of view of a child. So a few months after taking the picture book class, one early morning, about 4 a.m., I was suddenly awake and the whole story was like in my brain and I couldn't fall back asleep. So I had to get up and write them down on pieces of paper. Actually, I wrote them down in bed, kind of in the dark. That's the whole story of my picture book, the second draft. And I also laid out um, all the page page numbers. And it's like an instant download from somewhere. I wrote about this on my blog, on my website, jennycheng.com in more details. So from this, I made a dummy book. It's just pieces of paper stapled together. And it's very messy. <laughs> It's just a way for me to like get my ideas down because I also learned in the picture book class that how you flip the page like it's a important tool that you can use in a picture book and how kids view a spread is also an important consideration. So I found making a dummy book really useful for myself and I got this thumbnail page from my class and I just I did some arrow here like so I would do like the general mood going like going up or going down in the story and notes but later I found doing my own thumbnails on larger pieces of paper like um like these 11 by 17 paper it actually, I think it gave me more freedom and I feel more um, free when I just draw my own boxes and then write down notes like what I'm planning to do and stuff like that. So later I did more of these and I found them really useful. Just draw boxes and then do whatever you want on these paper. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's 2016. I was taking other art classes at this time. So like fundamental in art. So I thought I needed to learn more before I can tackle this uh, picture book project. So I kind of stopped working on my story. And two years later in 2018, I got my certificate in fine art and I took another picture book class just for fun. In this class, I typed out my manuscript and got my first critique in class. So I typed them up from the very initial draft that nobody can read. Type it up so I can share with my class, my teacher. So my teacher told us about Squibby, the Society of Children's Book of Writers and Illustrators, and I joined and found out that there's going to be a conference in Seattle, which is only about three hours drive from where I live. So it's much closer to the uh, New York or the LA conference. And the Seattle conference was pretty big too. So I made it my goal to make a proper dummy book to show at the conference, which, is, which was happening on, in May, 2019. Yeah, and I was very naive to think that I can finish my dummy book 
over the Christmas holiday in 2018. Then my son was home during the winter break and I couldn't focus on making my picture books. So actually I had to wait until like my son returned to school and I started working on my book. The first day he returned to school in January 2019 and I worked on it like a full time job, full time job when he was at school. And I barely finished it just before the conference in May. And this was the Dame book that I brought to the conference. I just stapled paper together and glue my illustration and my text to the correct page. So the biggest critique that I got was that the eyes were too big and too sparkly. <laughs> and the style was outdated. I was kind of sad, but I, I still, so when I came home from the conference, I keep working on the manuscript and I change all the, um, all the eyes and rework all the illustrations. Yeah, so I went to more squibby critique groups in my area and I tried different plot lines also and made a different dummy book with different storyline. You can see the eyes are much simpler now. Here, where is it? Okay, here, <laughs> compared to this one. Yeah, I'm trying different size for the dummy too and I'm gluing them on the page again. So for the illustration, I would do the initial sketch on my sketchbook, sketchbook or like on the large piece of paper that I like to use, like on my thumbnail, like these. Oh, I'll show you these. So in my illustration class, I also learned that to um, try different uh, media for doing the illustration. So this is the sketch. And I found the one that I like to use. So this one from all these. And I just draw them on large pieces of paper. And I try different pens. Like I outlined them with different pens to see which one I like. I also tried different media, like try acrylic. I think I try watercolor, ink, pastel. So I tried them on different, like using different media to see how they look. And finally, I decided to scan my sketches into my computer and redraw them on my iPad. I also color them on my iPad using Procreate. And some of the illustrations I would use uh, traditional media, like this one, the acrylic, and I just use them as background with my digital drawings. And okay, here, this is the final dummy book that I submitted to different publishers in the beginning of 2020. I learned how to use um, Adobe InDesign and got this printed by commercial printers in actual size because I cannot print this large at home. And, um, okay. In the dummy, like usually you include one or two finished illustrations. So I included these two, but these two. And uh, so I sent them to different publishers in Canada and I think one in the United States. Yeah. So during the Squibby meeting in my area. Someone mentioned that PV pitch is happening on Twitter again. 
So it's an event where you can pitch your story to agents or publishers on Twitter. I had tried PB pitch before once, but I didn't get any likes. But because I've changed my illustration and Emmett's eyes, I decided to give it another try. I also rewrote my pitch. And this time I got three likes and Michelle McAvoy from the Little Press was one of the likes. And soon after I signed a publishing deal with her, with her company, the Little Press. And by this time, it was summer 2020. It took me another year to finish all the illustrations. During this time, because of COVID, there were a lot of free virtual workshops on Squibby, the SCBWI, Squibby website. I watched most of them and learned a lot from different authors and illustrators. In one of the workshops, uh, Vashti Harrison showed her color script where she would lay down all the pages together so she could see the color as a whole. And that's what I did here. Like, there. So I can see them like different pages all together on one page. These are not done yet at the time. <laughs> okay. And um, when I was working on my illustrations, my publisher, Michelle McAvoy, asked me about the ethnicity of Emmett. To be honest with you, I didn't even think about that. I just used whatever color I think looks good. And in, in the beginning, his hair color was like this one, reddish brown with a lighter skin color. And then after talking with Michelle, I decided to change his color, hair color to black and with a darker skin tone. So these are all the colors that I was trying. Yeah, so Emmett now is a second generation immigrant from Asia, just like me and my son. My son is third generation. So I did some research at the time. I can find some picture books featuring Asian children, but they were mostly stories about Asian holidays or um, traditions. I found maybe one book with an Asian child and family doing just regular kid stuff. So I want to thank Michelle for bringing this topic of representation. I think it's uh, very important at this time. And I think kids do pick up on these kind of things. So before I talk to Michelle about this, in my uh, dummy, in my sketch, my son told me that Emma shouldn't be wearing shoes inside the house. <laughs> yeah, that's like an Asian culture that we don't wear shoes inside the house. And uh, so I changed some of the settings in my story to reflect, to reflect Asian immigrant cultures and habits. So for example, Emmett is now only wearing socks inside the house and the parents are wearing indoor slippers, eating noodles with chopsticks. Yes, <laughs> ramen specifically. So I think for anyone thinking about getting started in the um, children's book, and I think taking picture book classes and joining SCBWI were two of the best things that I did. And also going on PB, uh, PB Pitch, where I connected with, with my publisher. So three things, take some classes, join Squibby, and try PB pitch. Yes. Yeah, so today is Thanksgiving Day in Canada. And I want to thank you for spending time with me here today. I also want to thank Michelle McAvoy of the Little Press for this amazing experience of putting my story out there. I think Thanksgiving or gratitude or appreciation play an important part in my life. 
Yeah, I think whenever I feel genuine gratitude or appreciation, something good happens. I just learned this in recent years. For example, at the beginning of the pandemic, we were in lockdown. And I remember sitting at home just reading a book. There was nothing happening in my life at the time. I've sent out my dummy books to several publishers and I had not heard from any of them. So I checked their websites and found out that they were not accepting manuscripts anymore due to COVID. But I remember that day sitting on my sofa, just reading a book with my husband and my son nearby. And at the moment, like, even though there's nothing happening in my picture book journey, I feel like a genuine contentment that everything is enough, that there is nothing more that I can ask for. And um, I don't know how, but I feel that has something to do with me getting this publishing deal, like feeling appreciation and thankful and gratitude. So now whenever I feel down or depressed or bad or negative in any other way, I try to remind myself to appreciate all the things and people that I have right now in my life. Yeah, and uh, I can even narrow it down more to appreciate whatever I have at this moment in time. So one of my favorite authors, Esther Hicks said, even just appreciate you, appreciating your head on the pillow when you are going to bed, like feel the comfort and appreciate the, that feeling and that's enough. So my book MX Box will be out next year in April. I wrote this book because I want to share with my son and other children that I, that I hope they can follow their heart and forge their own path. So uh, Joseph Campbell, who coined the phrase, follow your bliss. I think he had a huge influence on my life and my art and my work. So he was describing a group of knights going on a quest for the Holy Grail. And he said, I'm going to read the quote, quote, each enter the forest at a point that he himself had chosen, where it was darkest and there was no path. If there is a path, it is someone else's path and you are not on the adventure. End quote. I love this quote. So, I write about my inspirations and what I'm learning on my publishing journey on my blog and my website, jennychen.com. It's spelled J-E-N-I-C-H-E-N.com. Check it out and tell me what you think. I would love to chat with you about these topics. And I, yeah, that's it for now. I think my 25 minutes is up. And thank you for joining me today and happy Thanksgiving. Bye.